Don't Pray For Me is an eclectic record, but if I'm pushed to name a song that means the most to me, I tend to say the title track. He's finally crawling his way back home. It has become the song that has, perhaps above all others that I've ever written, connected on a deeper level than I could ever have imagined. I have tried to describe the moment it popped into my head and I still find it really hard to explain what a profound moment it was. It arrived around the time of the Big Bad EP campaign when we were beginning to think about making our debut. I was acutely aware of my developing role as main songwriter in the band and felt a mixture of pressure and elation. Pressure at the need to really step up and elation that I could do it at all. The seed of the idea began with a programme about teenage runaways that had a huge effect on me. The kids on the programme were around my age and for whatever reason didn't have the things I had, warmth, comfort and care. It made me deeply sad. I have a memory of running up the stairs of my parents' house with the melody of the song beginning to form. By the time I had reached my bedroom, the chorus was in my head. I literally grabbed my battered acoustic guitar and began to frantically search for the chords. Within a few minutes, the main riff and chord structure were in place and half of the words were scrawled across the pages of a dog-eared diary. I then went downstairs and carried on watching TV with no idea if it was any good at all. It was only later that I realised I had something special. I introduced the song to the band at Black Barn Studios in Ripley, Surrey, owned by Robin Black, who worked with Black Sabbath, and remember being really nervous about it. It was late at night and we were all exhausted from recording demos. Our manager then said, Has anyone got anything else? I hadn't played it to anyone else at this point, and I didn't know if it would fit. Thankfully, everyone liked it, and it came together very easily. From that point on, our roles were becoming more defined, and the team play attitude began to take hold. This was a part of our determined approach to success, recognise what you're good at and focus on it. Like I've described earlier, I have no real earthly understanding of how these songs come to me. These days what I do know is it's all about allowing your mind and spirit to be as open and as accepting as possible, to open a portal almost. I think part of being creative is to be like a window of the world, or I see it, interpret it and spit it back out in one form of creative splurge or another. It's like having an antenna on your head, one that is continually looking for signals in everything that passes your window. The runaway kid's angle of the song isn't the whole story though. I began to evolve the lyric and it soon became as much about leaving a small place and seeking something more before returning back to face your demons, albeit with a greater sense of self and a bigger view. It wasn't and isn't supposed to be melancholic, far from it. It is drenched in honesty and is saying it's okay to be wrong, it's okay to fail just as long as you learn and move forward. There is defiance in the title as well as strength and resignation. We released the song as a single and it once again bombed, and I was devastated. I genuinely felt like it had all the hallmarks of a hit single. Just shows how wrong you can be. And with the album floundering and selling less copies than the label had anticipated, we found ourselves once again under pressure and we needed a miracle. Yeah. 